What's up, you guys? Welcome back, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of the YouTube Barber Academy. Today, we have another fade. I did a little design at the end, but I really didn't capture too much of it on video for some reason. But I just want to explain to you guys how I'm doing it step by step. So let's get into it. Okay, the other thing that's going on in this video is I'm using my modded Wall 1919 with the Andis Masters blade. And this blade and this clipper, this combination is a beast. So for those of you guys wondering how I got this this way or whatever, you guys can check out the mod video where I show you how to do it. Um, if not, there's, there's people online who sell this, this as well. So, okay, we're gonna begin by cutting the top with a number four and I'm just gonna knock all that down. So you guys know what that's pretty much gonna look like and we're gonna begin our process on the sides with a number two. One of the reasons why we begin with that number two is kind of simple because anything above a number two, we already know that we like to do clipper over comb. So we'll put And if you struggle with clipper over comb, or if you struggle with scissor over comb, then you know that's fine. I have a video on that. Go back and check that video out as well. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna put our five zero line in. So a five zero line, for those who might not know, a five zero line can be accomplished with a trimmer or a detachable clipper. Obviously, I prefer to use a detachable clipper and I'll start on one side, work it all the way back to the occipital bone, then jump to the other side. The other thing too is with some detachables, they get hot, you see me check it on my wrist right there, and then I spray it in between just to cool it down. So if it gets hot, you always wanna check that, you don't wanna burn anybody, especially if you're using these detachables with these really thin 5-0 blades, but they put in work, they're the workhorse, and they're gonna eliminate bulk a lot faster than anything else will, but if for some reason you don't have that, just go ahead and use a trimmer and let's get them down to skin. And this process that we're going through is, is constantly, you know, we're, we're always using this process to get. Sometimes the fade changes a little bit as we go higher, but this process doesn't change. So I wanna get the skin part done, the bulk part done, get those sides at least at a number two so that I can see what I'm doing before I put my 5-0 line in. Don't put your 5-0 line in into a massive amount of hair, okay? So now we're gonna go below and we're gonna skin. So now that we're skinning them, we're gonna actually use the electric shaver. I'm going to begin arcing away with it. If this was an electric shaver, I'm gonna begin arcing away as I get close to this line. But down here, I wanna hold it kind of tight up against the skin, push as hard as you want. And also, if you are still struggling to make the blend perfect from skin to five zeros, which the great thing about this is this is just a small jump. We're talking about a small jump from five zeros to skin, which is what makes it so easy to do. And that's why it's kind of important that you guys make these little small jumps and you make sure that all your clippers are set up properly so that one goes right into the other, goes right into the other, and we create this, this nice smooth blend where there is no choppiness. It just goes from skin into some, some length of some kind, whether it's a two, a four, long hair on scissors, whatever, okay? So we can also come down with the grain in that process for that skin, but we wanna make sure that this, this part is perfect. And in the next portion of our attack, we are going to set another guideline with just an open taper. So our open taper guideline means that I have no guard on this. I have this in the open position so that the clipper is all the way open, okay? And I make that line. It's very simple. So far, I think everybody can follow me. It's pretty simple, right? The next step, if you see on these Andis Masters that I'm using as an example, I have notches, right? So I'll just go to that first notch, or if you don't have notches, just move your lever slightly, okay? And we're gonna begin kind of keeping it on an angle, and it's very important that you keep it flush on the head. Don't be leaving the head too much, okay? Keep it on the head, start working this crisscross motion, and we're gonna stop just below where we went with that open taper, okay? And each time we move a notch, we're gonna stop just below that, and we're gonna start just below that, and we're gonna continue working this down, working this down, until there's nothing left, and until this blend is solid, and it's clean from skin to open taper, okay? So what you're actually gonna see now, if we're looking at the head, um, 
you know, as I, as I continue, once I get this perfect, you're going to see that I have a smooth blend from skin to open taper. And if for some reason you do not have a smooth blend from skin to open taper, it's very possible that you might need to remove this 5-0 line, might still have a little bit of trouble left to, to work on. You might have to go back with the trimmers. That's fine if you do. And it's kind of a little secret to go back with the trimmers because the trimmers can get just a touch closer than that 5-0 blade does unless you're like MMA and you zero gap all your detachables, which I don't. So they're set pretty close, but they go back. And if I have that little advantage with the trimmer, I can go back and I can knock out whatever residual there is and I can begin my next part of the process, which I've just begun. So we have that open taper line and the very next one I'm gonna set in is with the one open. So one uh, open, okay? And I'm gonna repeat the exact same process. The only difference is I put a guard on it, put it in the open position, create that other area. But in this case, I want less of a line, so I'm actually going to kind of start scooping away as I move towards that, that line. But for the board purpose or for explanation or theory purpose, we wanna make sure that we have this line here just to see. And I'm going to begin closing this clipper, say one notch at a time, working my way down, close it a little bit more, working my way down, and each time I'm working that process down. However, I want you guys to realize that we skipped a step, didn't we? Okay? We jumped straight from open taper to a one, but in between those two steps, there's actually the half guard. So, when I use the half guard, I wanna make sure that I go in with it open, and then I begin closing it because this number one is not gonna remove everything, right? It's not going to remove everything. So I'm gonna to have to jump back to the half guard. I'm gonna take out whatever residual there is. And if I need to, I might even remove the half guard and go back to my open taper just to make the blend perfectly smooth from five zero to one open. And if you are using Andis, you'll realize that one open actually blends quite well with the number two. Although they do sell a one and one half guard, which I have, and I've never even used it um, because I've never had a problem blending from the one to the two. So this is, this is one way that you guys can blend. Now I'm gonna show you guys on the other side, I'm actually gonna change it up a little bit, okay? Now I'm not changing it up a whole lot. There's really only one, one little difference that, that I'm gonna change here. And the difference is actually very simple. So. This, this part stays the same. Obviously the 5-0 line is still there and we're beginning the open taper attack. So all that part is the same, okay? And once, once I'm done with this open taper attack, I began closing it, working my way down, crisscrossing, keeping it flush and, and working my way down with that blend. Um, eventually you're gonna see this 5-0 line disappears. Now what's What's kind of what's kind of nice about this next attack is instead of attacking with the number one, which I realize I'm getting a little bit ahead of the video, but instead of attacking this next step with the number one, we're actually going to attack with the half open. Now, there's there's just something about this, this this double magnetic clipper, and the and the zero guard and something about the wrist motion. I don't know. I can't really explain it, but for some reason I feel like I can just snap out the blend a lot faster, leave a lot less residual, have a lot less cleanup to work on. And you know, all in all, I really would prefer to see you guys attack with the half, which makes it, which actually makes it pretty nice. If you attack with the half guard at this step, then you're actually just following your steps in order, which I think for anybody new is, is going to be, it's going to be a extreme benefit to follow your steps in order because somebody new might not understand why am I skipping the half guard? Why am I jumping to the one and coming back? And it's all in an effort just to make this blend smooth. But if I was to just work you through a, a quick fade scale, it's, it's very simple. If I shave somebody's entire head with a number two, right? And I wanted to blend the bottom part of it a little bit lower, I can easily come in with a 1.5 open. If I wanted to shave the very bottom of this without going higher than where I went with the 1.5 open, I can do a 1.5 closed if we're using wall. If we're using Angus, we could just do this with the one open, one closed. Now the next one, next one down from the 1.5 open, 1.5 closed would be one open, one closed. Then it would be half open, half closed. Then it would be 
open, closed, trimmer, skinner. I said skinner. <laughs> All right, so this is, this is your progression. No matter what you choose to do, um, whether you're using Andis or whether you're using Wall, no matter what you're, you're choosing to do, at some point, you're gonna hit all these lengths, okay? And at some point, you're gonna work all these guards. So if for some reason you're, you're having trouble, um, more than likely, th these are the, the, the top areas where I see people having trouble. The number one thing I see people struggle with is, is they have a lot of trouble understanding that they have to keep the clipper flush and flat. So that's simply me just holding it like this. Now you can see this blade has a slight curve in it, right? So if I hold it here, obviously I'm not getting that intended length, right? So on a, on a slight angle, that's what flush is. The number two thing I see people struggling with, they leave the head way too much. So they're leaving the head because somebody told them they need to flick or whatever, but that person who told them they need to flick didn't explain to them that that flick is actually still anchored on the head. So notice how I'm moving, right? But I'm not leaving the head, you know, crazy. That could leave, that could lead to a lot of mistakes, and it's it's just a lot better if if you reduce the amount that you're doing. Now, the next thing I see, one of the bigger problems is people are not following their steps correctly, and they're always a little bit ahead of themselves. They'll they'll wind up being on step five before they're done with step two. Okay. So when I do that process from skin to open taper, I wanna make sure that that's perfect. I want that to be as perfect as it could possibly be before I move on. And if for some reason it's not perfect, I'm gonna return and I'm going to fix it. So it's as simple as that. Don't get ahead of yourself. Stick to your process, follow your process and work your way from one area to the next, you know, nice and smooth and, and have, have a game plan, okay? So those are, those are some of the, the biggest problems I see with, with people who are struggling or they're telling me they're pushing their fades a little bit too high. If you tend to be pushing your fades a little bit too high, um, probably you might wanna consider using one of, one of my processes, fade system one, fade system two, or maybe even fade system three. Now I would say it's, it's kind of easier to follow it in the order. So maybe you should actually try this one that we just talked about when you get to the the area where you attack, you attack with the half, then the only thing you're gonna have left is a little bit of residual with the one. Now, in the case of this kid, what I was trying to do is I was trying to leave a little bit of weight around that parietal ridge, and I wanted to make sure that I had enough darkness left over so that I could show a really good contrast from where he's his skin all the way up to where that, where that length is, is getting longer and it's, it's really dark. I love working with this kid's hair, but one of the things you need to realize too when you work with this hair is you need to leave it dark in certain spots, which is why sometimes I won't even try to make the blend perfect. I will just go through, make it as nice as possible. When I get in the parietal ridge, a lot of times I can fix that with some, some shear over comb or some thinning shear over comb or some freehand um, thinning shear work like you just seen me do. So before I get ahead of myself, a lot of you guys keep asking about edge ups and I've included talk about edge ups in like so many videos. Um, Maybe I need to make a separate edge up video. I just feel like there isn't enough substance here for a separate edge up video. But if you, if you go through the edge and you're careful, especially with somebody who's got such a nice clean um, line as he does, he came in with a fairly straight line to begin with and you know it makes it really easy. All I gotta do is, is start on one side, whatever side I want, make sure that it's nice and square, make sure that it's nice and even and, and work my way out to the middle jump over to that other side and, and start to try to match it. Now you might get discouraged when you see people on Instagram doing those last two taps on an edge that was already perfect. They've already worked on it for like 15 minutes and now they're showing you a video, all oh, angles is so nice. They did it in just one second and they did it because of a blade modification or just such a great trimmer and you should buy it. And you know, really it's, it's the barber that makes the equipment. It's not the equipment that makes the barber. So you can do, great work with practically any clipper or trimmer within reason. Now that doesn't mean to say that there isn't stuff that makes our job easier, there certainly is. And uh, this Gold FX that I actually just recently gave away on the channel is one of those things that makes life a little bit easier. So um, if you have a client come in and their edge up is, is far from perfect, let's say you have a client, a client come in and their edge is all crooked like this. I mean, you could see that to fix it, you would have to take a lot of hair. 
Um, in this case, it might not be smart to take a bunch of hair. You might not want to push them back so far. You might actually want to convince them to, to go a little bit easier on this. And uh, maybe if you have to keep it a little bit crooked, you have to keep it a little bit crooked. I mean, what, what are you going to do? You can't cut all that hair off and make them look crazy in the second. Two days goes by, there's going to be all this residual grow back. And guess who's going to look bad? It's going to be you. See me acting like a fool with these pictures, having a good time. But uh, yeah, so I did the design and stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I felt like it turned out pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. And uh, other than that, man, let, let me know what you guys thought about this video. Uh, did it help you out? Is there anything I'm not saying or not explaining? Or is there any video ideas you got? Please leave them in the comments. And until I see you guys in my next video, I'm Mr. Eddie Barber. This is the YouTube Barber Academy. Please click subscribe, hit that thumbs up. It really helps me out. And I'm out of here, man.